All right, guys, Urban Sentinel here. This video is going to be about bartering, some basics, uh, general topic of discussion that within the prepping community, it's definitely something that's on a checklist. Now, this is more on the before an SHTF situation versus an after, and I'll get into exactly why that is. But the overall basics of bartering, unless you've never gone to a flea market or you've never um, haggled over a price for something on sale at a store or you've never put anything up online through Craigslist or any of those other uh, apps that are out there or you've never gone to a pawn shop to look at buying stuff. Most people by and large have had multiple situations where either they're looking to either get more for what they have from someone or pay less for what they want from someone. That's the way the exchange goes. And bartering is never a 50-50. It's never an even split. There's always going to be either the person that's looking to acquire something is going to be either be paying more but trying to pay less, or the person who's looking to sell or trade is looking to get the most that they can from their end. That's just the way it is. And it really comes down to it is a skill that can be developed, it can be built, but you have to still have a better understanding of First off, the value of either the item or the service that you are providing, that you are giving, that you're trading in exchange for the value in the item or service that you're looking to get. That's the key thing. You could have a situation where uh, someone's looking to make some repairs and they need a few tools and you happen to have those tools and you see that they have some item in their possession that you want. You need that item they're only looking for a temporary use of tools whereas you're looking for a permanent possession of the item so you may say hey i'll let you use my tools if you give me that in exchange they can decide that that item that they have is still worth more to them than borrowing your tools and they say no nah, sorry pass gotta go they can find someone else to borrow tools from that maybe wants to exchange something different whereas if you're looking for an item to keep permanently you've lost out on that opportunity you have to keep searching with regards to where we are right now in our current situation. There will be a time in the SHTF situation where effectively speaking, let's use a scenario, an economic collapse, hyperinflation, you know, it's gone, it's gone up through the roof. The value of our dollar purchasing power for what is available has been significantly drastically reduced. Services from companies and corporations of course, all go up because while they have employees, they have to start paying their employees more because once again, the value of the dollar for what it's worth is significantly less. So that means when you would normally take an item to a repair shop or back to the retail store to have a technician look at it or you know have a technician come out to repair something, it's gonna cost you a lot more to do it. So if you're not a person who's capable of doing that work, either because you don't have the skill set or you don't have the effective equipment you need to do it, you're gonna to have to look some other way to get it done. And bartering in that situation is something that would be done. You'd begin to see an exchange of services. A lot of the exchange of services, sometimes it's not a one-to-one. -one. It's not, oh, you get my car running and I'll go and repair your washing machine. Sometimes it's simply a matter of items for services or items for items. And again, it comes down to the value of the item and everyone wants to believe that whatever they have is the best. That's not always going to be the case and it's definitely not going to be the case in the other person's viewpoint. They may want the item, they may need the item, but they're not going to hold it to the holy grail of being the best of the best. They, if in put in position, may have to submit to whatever your offer is or they can just you know take their goods and go someplace else. For stocking up, effectively speaking. First and foremost, prepare for yourself. That's the first thing, always prepare for yourself. If you go and buy one of something normally, buy two. If you normally buy two, buy four, but prepare for yourself first. Then after that, start taking a look at what you have. Certain commodities right now from the grocery stores and places like that are already going up in price. And a lot of people, a lot of preppers are getting to the point where they're buying extra to put aside for that purpose. So if you look at the cost of vegetable oil, corn oil, uh, olive oil in your area, and you think to 
three, four months back what that cost was and you see that it's gone up and you know that it will continue to go up. So you may decide, well, you only go through a one gallon jug of vegetable oil or a two quart container of olive oil for all the meals that you make over the course of two, three, four months. So when you look and you see that you've got four containers of those, you think to yourself, well, I can put one off to the side that I'll keep as a bartering item. Flour, sugar, all those other food staples, same situation. You may decide that you might want to bag up, and I had mentioned that in another video, getting uh, one pint and one quart Ziploc bags, using a measuring cup, measuring out certain amounts of those materials, of the salt, the sugar, the flour, marking them, ziplocking them, and keeping them into a tub for that purpose that if you're going to barter and exchange and you're in a situation, one, you don't want to walk around with you know a five pound bag of sugar. That's just ridiculous. But if you've got two or three small bags of sugar measured out in one cup, two cup, two cup increments, it's easier to get an exchange for that. Same thing with hard goods, clothing, extra socks, underwear, pants, sweatshirts, things like that. Things that you could go into a Walmart that are just generic off the shelf, Walmart brand or even some name brand stuff, but in a situation where our economy is turned upside down, people will need new clothing in terms of maybe they don't have enough or maybe their clothing has gotten worn out to you know an extent where it's not viable to use anymore. Maybe their repair skills as far as sewing aren't up to, aren't up to snuff and finding someone to then do that work for them and perhaps they don't have the time to do it themselves doesn't matter if you have brand new socks in a package that's something that's worth something if you've got effectively sweatshirts or extra sweatpants things like that again stuff that's you know worth a value the whole PPE personal protection equipment that we've been utilizing over the last two years gloves masks sanitizer bleach all those things all of those things have a value and especially when you get into a situation where they're either just too exorbitantly expensive the cost is just too much on the shelf versus you have it and you can you know basically you become that 70s movie cliche where you're standing around the corner going Psst, hey come here i got something for you that's what it ends up being there may be a case where you might have a, effectively a black market network of people that have those supplies have those items and they do just that they loiter in areas where they know people are going to go in first to the retail establishment and see if one they have it and then two if they can afford to buy it if it is there and then when they come out from basically a negative on one of those two things you're there to kind of like fill that little void it may happen like that it may be a case of if this were some major catastrophe, let's say in a, a grid down situation, and after people have kind of picked themselves up from getting junk punched, and they start to realize that, you know, the society and the just-in-time delivery system and all that is gone and it's completely shut down, you may have community markets becoming established. You might have people that gather at a, re a nearby elementary school or in a church parking lot, someplace that a lot of people in a neighborhood know, and they start associating the basic exchange of goods and services in that location because you're not going to someone's house you're not bringing people to your home because people will still want to keep that buffer that safe zone of that's their last refuge but they'll be willing to go to just like you are now if you're making an exchange for something you know on craigslist it's always a safe bet that you go to a public place you go to a place that's not where you live and it's not directly associated with you and this way you're in the public eye, they're in the public eye, and hopefully everything goes fine. It'll be the same situation. So you look at the things that you want to effectively start keeping for bartering. And again, buy what you need for you and your family first, and then look at what you can pull off to the side. Some cases, there are always going to be certain hot commodities. I'll say as a firearm owner, ammunition is still going to be a hot commodity. That's one of those things. Tools will be a hot commodity. Small tool kits, large tool kits, individual tool kits, 10 millimeter sockets. And if you're laughing when I said that, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Other things, kitchen uh, utensils. People don't think about it. You know, forks, knives, and spoons, spatulas, tongs, things for basic cooking, 
that a lot of people will end up doing because they're going to be cooking depending upon what happens with the power grid if there is an EMP and everything is shut down people are going to be doing a lot of cooking over open fires over grills things like that so they're going to need metal utensils that can withstand the heat from the fire some of the silicone ones can but I really wouldn't trust a silicone set of tongs as I'm working over a large open fire pit because one they're too short and two the temperature might be a bit too much to the point where the metal and silicone separate from each other but that's a whole separate thing but the point getting is a lot of things that people take for granted small little things they're going to need because either what they have is inadequate or simply put they ran out or it broke and they didn't have any spares and a lot of times that's really what it comes down to it's not that they never had it it's just that whatever it was is no longer functioning and now they need a new one so in many cases going to dollar stores going to discount stores places like that going to thrift shops you can spend a little bit of money to get certain items that you know are going to be needed you know things that right off the top of your head don't jump out like a snow shovel when it's spring summer no one thinks about snow shovels up here in new england until the winter time comes and you have to dig yourself out i have snow shovels in my house for my house if i thought ahead of time that okay we may hit a situation in a in, you know in the next year that we're going to get some heavy snow and people are ill prepared especially if we don't have regular city services and people need to clear snow off of their roof and clear their walkways and the the uh, area around their house so that way they can at least move outside of their structure snow shovels that would be something that people would look into repairs for automobiles spare parts you go into an auto store and you look at a lot of the small items on the shelf a lot of it yes does cost money and i'm not saying go out and start loading up on every item that you can but assorted boxes of fuses you know a few extra wire clip holders and things like that small little things that don't normally go bad all the time on every vehicle but when they do it kind of slows everything up and it becomes that one thing where you need that above anything else to get things going looking at food products same principle preferably if you're going to barter with food you want to be able to have shelf stable stuff you know no one wants to look at a can of uh, an expired meat product and think do i really want to open it even though it says best buy People don't want to take that risk so they're more likely to still turn their nose up at it because whatever they have in exchange they'd rather hang on to it to find something a little less questionable clothing items are always good i won't say no to jewelry because only for the fact that if we are in an economic situation and you know that the jewelry that you have has actual value in the metal meaning it's real gold real silver you know real diamond stuff that is verifiable enough because it doesn't take too much for a pawn shop owner or a jewelry store owner to do an acid test on the gold to see you know how good it is that's easy enough to do if you happen to have a decent sized gold chain you can break off small pieces of that so the overall value of the chain still retains itself but you're handing off small little bits at a time if you happen to have gold coin silver coin you know the silver dollars they have a face value but they also still have an intrinsic value for the worth of the silver and again that's something that you have to feel out the market you know if the power grid goes down it's not grab your bag of silver coins and head out to the grocery store and start waving around going i got the silver who wants to exchange you know you wait until everything has bled itself out because no matter what you say the dollar and a lot of people you know will say well the dollar's not worth anything true i say to that you're absolutely right the dollar's value has declined but nobody that says oh the dollar's not worth anything it's just a fiat currency will give you that fiat currency from their bank account they won't hand it over from their wallet so either it does have some sort of value or their idea of what value is to that dollar is a little bit skewed but you wait until the cash runs out because you can shut off the electronic systems if the clerk behind the counter can still do basic math the stores are still going to be open they're just simply going to take cash and in that case again you want to be reasonable don't go around with hundred dollar bills fives singles maybe a few tens because they're most likely not going to either make change for large bills or have the change for large bills they may round up to the even number and just call it what it is 
once effectively speaking the dollar the fiat currency is no longer viable because it just takes too many of them to buy so less then that's when you're going to start to see people doing those exchanges doing those i'll help you with this if you either help me with that or you get this for me right now before a collapse the situation that we're in right now if there are too many steps to go through people aren't going to do them you know i can have a friend say hey can you help me move this stuff and we use your truck i say okay fine but i need you to go and talk to that guy that you know to see if he'll sell me this at a lower price than what i can find online that's one too many hurdles to go through you know if i had said all right i'll help you move for um a case of beer or i'll help you move for you go in and you buy this item from the grocery store for me things like that which I have done before. I've, I've done exchange work for, you know, a case of beer. I've done exchange work for actually for a couple of cans of tomato sauce and a bottle of, um, I think it was lemon vodka. It's just the way it is. But for the task that I was doing, it was a fair exchange. It wasn't any burden on me, wasn't any stress on me. It didn't cost me anything other than to show up on time, give a little help, and then I was on my way. But that's what you have to think about, what the cost is all around. If you're the one that has the item or you're providing the service, what will it cost you to do that? And what is the value that you want to get back from that? And on the other end, if you're looking to exchange and buy, it still comes down to how much are you willing to give? What are you willing to trade? Because you may say, I'm offering this. And then they point at something else, say, no, I want that instead. Is that something you're willing to switch up for or are you going to hold hard and fast to whatever it is you're offering that's the way it goes but bartering should be looked at as the next step as the reasonable progression in a situation where things have gone bad we don't hear a lot about it here in the united states you have to really dig for it but when you look at countries like Venezuela where they had an economic collapse when you look at several of the countries in Africa where the same thing they had hyperinflation you know things went through the roof people would still try to buy what was available but that was the problem there was less available so it became exchanging trading you know even the situation of a person stands in a long line for you to make a purchase meanwhile you're doing something for them while they're waiting in line for you it could be a simple exchange of, you know, oh, my grandmother will watch your children while you and I go get our places in line to buy these items. You're paying for the items. She's watching your kids. That's an exchange. It may not seem like much, but it helps you out. If there's something that you need and you need extra people there, that's how it goes. So it's not always going to be bags of silver coin and bags of bullets and things like that. It very well could be. But it's not always going to be that way. You have to look at the balance that is obtained between that, the, the ebb and flow of the environment that you're in. But for the most part, as a suggestion, you know, again, look at hot commodities that are out there now that you can afford that you're already buying. You can look at specialty items, cigarettes, alcohol, ammunition. Those three right off the top, those always have a value. Medical supplies, medicine prescription even over-the-counter stuff because at a certain point if there is a major economic collapse especially one due to something like a nuclear war there's going to be that break that snap point where the rioting the looting and everything happens and things are completely chaotic that dies down once it dies down whatever's left in the smoldering rubble of our society people are going to be picking through trying to find stuff well pharmacies grocery stores, places that you would normally go to, a lot of those will have been picked clean. A lot of those in some cases will still have merchandise and items there. You just have to literally dig for it because it's buried underneath rubble, trash, knocked over display stands, things like that. It's strewn across parking lots, leaving from where people were bumping into each other, racing back and forth, trying to grab everything. So you're more on a scavenger hunt there. But if you have some of those things already on hand, it makes it easier for you to offer up an exchange for things later on. It's not always a guarantee that it's going to be an even exchange. And it also, too, safety first, it's not always a guarantee that what you're getting ready to do and what you think is going to happen is going to happen. So those are things you take into consideration. But bartering should be something that you look at. It should be something that you keep in the forefront of your mind as we progress through. You start thinking to yourself, well, I've got extra of these things that you 
say, well, you got them for you and you intend to use them, but if you've got a case of 12, maybe you pull two items out of that case and put that off to the side. If you've got, you know, a couple of uh, eight packs of toilet paper still stocked up and you say, well, I've still got three here. I'll take one out, take out half and then, you know, wrap them up in, you know, Ziploc bags or plastic bags or something and put those off to the side. Whatever it is that you're comfortable with putting off from the things you've already kept back for yourself, start with that. Then you can start branching out into the other items that maybe you don't have, you know. I haven't bought cigarettes. I don't smoke. No one in my house smokes. I understand the value of it. But for right now, for the cost of a carton of cigarettes, I would still rather use that money towards other preps that I can use, that my family can use first, versus going out and buying that specific type of bartering item and hanging on to it in the event of, versus ammunition. I use ammunition for my handguns, for my rifles. I use it when I, you know, go out to the range. That has a value for me. So if I go out and I buy, I may say, well, I've already got three boxes of this. I'm buying two more. I'll take this one smaller box, put that off to the side. Maybe the next time I go, I say, okay, I'll take this other box, put that off to the side. So I'm still putting a little off to the side, but I'm keeping the majority for me and for my use. Because I know that if it reaches that point, that small box of ammo to someone who is either almost out or doesn't have any, is going to hold a higher value and then it's on me to decide what they have to offer versus what I have to offer. And that's really where it comes down to. Like I said, the exchange is never 50-50. There's always gonna be a little ebb and flow, a little back and forth, but you have to be able to kind of read the room, get the feel of the environment, knowing what you have and what you want versus what they have and what they want. Sometimes you can meet in the middle. If there are people that you've associated with before, the exchange might go quicker. But also, too, if they're people that you knew before a collapse, they may think that they're going to get a free pass or a freebie or a deep, you know, discount on something. And you got to tell them, it's like, no, nah, sorry, bro, the price is the price. You know, it's just the way it is. But again, that's all I have to say on that for now. So uh, you guys take care and I'll catch you later.